In this lesson, we'll learn how to seamlessly relocate an element while we're scrolling from one position to a totally new position. This works even on mobile when the layout changes. It just figures out the difference between those two, including their scale, rotation, and position. And we can also do this with multiple elements or images, changing their size and location while we scroll throughout the page. So let's get started building this out. To get started, let's copy the code for this and we'll add it to the before closing body tag of our page or project settings. In this example, we want this image to animate from the size and position of the span back to its original size and position. To do that, there's a couple elements we need to define. And the first is the component, which can be any div that holds our animation elements together. With this attribute name copied, I'll head over to my component give it the attribute name with a value of component. The next thing we need to define is our origin element, which sets the original size, position, and rotation. Our origin is going to be this span here that I just applied a width and height to. So I'll go ahead and give it this attribute name with a value of origin. Then we get to define our target element, which is the element that we want to animate. So in this case, our image is going to be the target here we'll give it the attribute name and value of target. So our image parent has sort of a width and height set. We'll give this image 100% width and height of its parent, but we need to make sure it has a max width of none so it can be allowed to animate to be larger than its parent when we need it. And I'm also going to hit Command Shift O key to reveal the responsive image checkbox. Let's uncheck that so the image doesn't get compressed down to this size. Now we need to define when we want our animation to start and end based on scroll position. To do that, we have the scrub start setting. We can use keywords like top center bottom or a percent from top of element or top of screen. And this can be applied to any child inside the component. So I'm gonna select this section here. We want the animation to start when the top of this section is at the top of the screen. So I'll give it this attribute name with a value of top of top, like so. Top of element is at top of screen. We want the animation to end whenever the top of this wrapper reaches the top of the screen. So we'll copy our scrub in attribute here and we'll go ahead and give it a value when top of element is at top of screen. Now this logo here is inside a position sticky div. It's staying with us while we scroll. Whenever our origin and target elements aren't in the same position sticky div together, we need to give a custom attribute to the sticky div. So to do that, I'll copy this attribute. It gets a value of true. So let's go ahead and apply this attribute name with a value of true to our position sticky div, and we can publish and try it out. So our target element is covering the origin element, and as we scroll, it animates to its original position, and the scroll is finished when the top of this element reaches top of screen. For this next example, we want this button to animate from the size and position of this first one here. Since we're animating it across two separate sections, I've grouped the sections together in one component div. We'll go ahead and give it our attribute name and a value of component. Then we can go ahead and select this sort of origin element and we'll give it a value of origin. This has the same text, it's the same size as the second button. The only purpose of it is really to set our origin size and position. To make things a little more interesting, I'll select the entire card and give it a combo class to adjust the scale and rotation. And even though all this is scaling and rotating the button, it'll still be able to map these two together. I'm also going to select this div here and turn the opacity down. The only purpose of it is just to define an original size and position. Then we can select this div here or this button, and we're going to go ahead and give it our attribute name and value of target, since this is the element we want to animate. Then we need to define when we want our animation to start and stop. So we'll copy scrub start, and we're going to have it start when the center of this element is at the center of the screen. So something like this. We'll go ahead and apply center, center. Now we want our animation to end somewhere around here. We can't use this as the uh, end point because it's a moving target. Uh, so we'll go ahead and copy scrub in, and we'll use this entire div as our end point. So we'll say whenever the center of this div is at the center of the screen, let our animation end. Let's publish it and try it out. So if we look at what's going on here, this button is being animated from the origin to its original size, position, and rotation. And that's working great, but there's a lot of extra space at the bottom of this text here. And if we inspect to see what's happening, 
You'll notice that we're animating sort of the width and height of this button here, but we're not doing anything to the text inside it. So the button is growing, but the text inside is not. There's some optional settings we can apply to our component. And one of those is to scale the target element instead of animating its width and height. This really only works if our origin and target element have the same aspect ratio. Otherwise, it just looks a little stretched. But in our case, we can select our entire component and give it that setting of scale true. And then it'll animate the scale property of the button instead of its width and height. So checking that out now, there's no extra space at the bottom of the text since we're scaling the entire button. One important note is we need to make sure all images across our site have a height defined. Before images load in, they're a zero pixel height. And once they load, the height increases and it could offset all of our trigger points and cause things not to line up. So to solve for that, I like to apply top percent padding to a div and then set my image to absolute inside of that div. A good test is just to try deleting your image and make sure the height of the page or the content doesn't change when the image is gone. For this last example, my component div here has the attribute value of component. And inside the component, I have this wrapper. It has a height of 300 VH. Inside of that, I have a section with a height of 100 VH. I'm going to give this section position sticky zero pixels to the top so it stays with us while we scroll past the entire wrapper. Now inside of this sticky section, we have this origin wrap. Inside of that is a bunch of origin divs. So we can actually have multiple origin and target elements inside each component. I've given each of these origin divs an attribute value of origin, and we're just using these to set the original size and position of our items. So I'll turn the opacity down on this entire wrap. We don't really need to see it but I have this target wrap absolute on top of that, and inside of this is a bunch of images. And each of these images have the attribute value of target. So I could have used a collection list for my origin items and another collection for the target items, but I'm just using static content in this case. It's gonna match these based on their order within the page. So the first target in this list will match to the first origin in this list. So now that we have that set up, we just need to define our start and end points. I want our animation to start when the top of this wrapper reaches the top of the screen. So we'll go ahead and apply scrub start uh, top top on the wrapper itself. And we want it to end basically whenever the bottom of this wrap reaches bottom of screen. So we'll go ahead and apply bottom of wrap, bottom of screen on the wrapper. Now let's publish it and try it out. So whenever the top of this wrap reaches top of screen, our targets are animating from origin position to their original size and position. They're all animating at the same time though. We could offset the starts of each of these so they appear to stagger out. To do that, it's an optional setting we can apply to the component called distribute start times. And we select a duration we wanna distribute the start times over. So on the component, I'll say distribute the start times over 0.2 seconds and let's publish and see what that does. So now you can see they're kind of animating one after the other, after the other, and so forth. And right now they're just animating based on their order within the page, but we can customize the order that they animate into, and we could set that to animate from the center, so the middle element, and it'll animate on out through both edges, or animate from the end of the list, so it'll animate starting with this one and going all the way back down, or animate from a random direction. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this setting. We apply it to the component. And on my component, I'll just say animate randomly. So it'll choose at random which one should start first, second, third, and so on. And now the order that the items start are completely random. So I've actually just changed the layout on each breakpoint uh, for the origin and target elements. And it just figures out what it needs to do to move those in the right place. But if we did want to disable the interaction for some reason on mobile, we can select a minimum screen size that we want this to work for. And we could apply this setting to the component. Uh, so it's component specific. We could say the smallest version of desktop. So this would only run on desktop if we have the setting applied. So that wraps up this lesson on the scroll flip power up. This power up is built using GSAP flip and GSAP scroll trigger. If you'd like to learn more about either of those, be sure to check out my website or my GSAP crash course. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson and I'll catch you in the next one.